I'd like to welcome you to Canada. We're at Oak Hill Mission. Welcome and uh, God bless you. If you brought a Bible, have a thought on my heart, I would that you would turn over to 1 Kings, Old Testament, 1 Kings, the 18th chapter. We'll start in the uh, 16th and, and read down. Uh, we'll skip here and there to a few verses. In 1 Kings, the 18th chapter, I'll preface this message by saying that in the time since, the Word of God teaches that there's two kinds of people. You'll find that in Genesis 3.15 if you go there. Uh, there's the seed of the serpent and there's the seed of the woman which is the church. Eve, the mother of all living. And so in the time sense of people where there's a past, present, and a future, there are two and only two kinds of people. The saved and the unsaved. The seed of the serpent and those that are God's children which make up the church. Now in the eternal sense of things, or I will say it this way. Let me say that in the eternal sense there are two ways and in the time sense there's three. That would be a better preface. In the time sense there are those that are sold out to sin. Those that are sold out to God. And those that are in an uncommitted state and don't know which one they serve. But in the eternal sense, God knows who's who. For the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord doth know. Them that are His. Them that are His. Hallelujah. It's not a question mark with God, it's exclamation point. I know mine. And those that are God's know Him. My sheep hear my voice and a stranger will they not follow. Thank you, Jesus. For they know not the voice of a stranger. That's my preface. Two kinds of people and three kinds of people. In the eternal sense, only two. Gods or not gods? You say, how do you figure that? Well, I hear the old writer say, they that have the Spirit of God are His, and they that have not the Spirit of God are none of His. There's the dividing line. But in the time since that I walk through this dark world, I find three kinds of people. And that's what I want to preach on tonight, if God will bless. The Mount Carmel experience was three kinds of people. Three kinds of people. Those that were truly committed to God were in the minority. One, his name was Elijah. The committed side to Satan was 450 servants and prophets of Baal. And all the ten tribes of Israel that <coughs> were undecided whom they wanted to serve. That's the scenario and the setting of where we're going in 1 Kings, the 18th chapter. Now to give you a little background to before we get here, 
is that in the beginning, Israel was following God. Kind of like my forefathers. They were following God. But somewhere in time, God was not enough. Just like Israel. And Israel said, give us a king. God's not enough. We need a ruler. We need a king. That's like many of our associations and our church denominations. God leading us through this wilderness of sin is not enough. Give us a king. Amen. Now Ahab was one of the worst rulers in the whole history Amen. of Israel. He had a committed wife called Jezebel that was sold out to Satan. And he followed her and was servant, basically, to his wife. Like many churches today. God forbid. God is not enough. We need to worship a ruler, a king. God will let you go there. God let Israel go there. I'll give you a king. But the Bible was full of kings that were good kings and God also gave them kings after their heart which were evil kings. And when God gave them a good king, they prospered. And when God let an evil king come among them, they were decimated. That's exactly how it is today. Let's read just a little bit. Now, Elijah has been commissioned by God, and because Ahab is such an evil ruler over Israel, God has let the be a famine. And the famine was brought about because there was no rain. God had closed heaven off to where there no longer was any rain coming down. Things were drying up and dying. And so he commissioned his prophet Elijah to close heaven. And it had been about three, three and a half years it hadn't rained on the face of the earth. In Ohio, it's rained probably for 30 days straight. The farmers can't even get the seed in the ground. I wonder what the problem is. Are we not living the way we need to live as a society? And so we've got the prophet of God and he has closed heaven because God has commissioned him. And it's not rained for three to three and a half years. And all of a sudden, Ahab wants to hunt this man down and kill him. He calls him the troubler of Israel. Many that speak out against the evil rulers of our associations, our denominations, and our church affiliations are called troublers of Israel. When all they want is the people to follow God and to follow His truth and to love Him with all their heart. Yes. They're not troublers. They're commissioned of God. I've had people tell me I wouldn't go on Facebook and talk this or talk that. You'll kill your ministry. Honey, I ain't got no ministry. Amen. What I got is what the Lord gives me. Yes. 
I'm not out in a popularity contest trying to make myself something. I just want to follow God. I just want to be honest and true with God. So that when I get down to the end of my race, I can say I've done all I know to do. Come on, Keith. There's the truth. And I want to hear him say, enter in, thou good and profitable servant. Amen. You've been faithful over a few things. Thank you, Jesus. But you see, people like Elijah, they call trouble. So Ahab's been in hiding. Ahab or uh, Elijah has been in hiding because Ahab has sent out men to try and find him. He's going to deal with God's servant. Now I've seen this my whole church life. Mm -hmm. Godly men and godly women are labeled troublemakers, and all of a sudden. The evil rulers over some of these church bodies send people to destroy them. Seek them out, find them, and silence them. But you see, Elijah was carried from here and there by God. And they couldn't find him. They'd searched. They couldn't find him. The man of God couldn't be found. God had him hid. But now we get down to the 16th verse and Obadiah was a godly man. And he went to meet Ahab and told him. And Ahab went to meet Elijah. Now we got a meeting of the minds. 17th verse. And it came to pass Ahab saw Elijah that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troublest Israel? Are you the troublemaker? Are you the one causing dissension among my people? Are you the one that's dividing the crowd and trying to cause trouble? And he answered, Elijah said, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and hast followed Balaam. Did you know Jesus hates the doctrine of Balaam according to the book of Revelation? Do you know what the doctrine of Balaam even is? Balaam was a man that was a prophet supposedly of God that could be hired or fired by money to either prophesy good or evil. He was for sale. And God had already written the scripture by the truth and sell it not. How many today are preaching for money? I'll tell you anything you need to hear. You just give me some silver and gold. I'll stand up before a large crowd and tell you blessings are on its way. God's got you. He's going to give you a big new home. He's going to get you a brand new Cadillac. God's going to send you here and God's going to bless you there. And all the while, God says, I said not. Not one word did I say. Amen. The Bible calls that a false prophet. Nineteenth verse. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel and the prophets of Baal four hundred and fifty and the prophets of the groves four hundred. That's eight hundred and fifty men which eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab, 20th verse, sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. That's the whole house of God. All of Israel was the whole house of God. 
Now we got everybody involved. We've got the one minority, the servant of God, committed to God and Him alone. If you are professing yourself to be a servant of God and you serve anything other than Jesus Christ, guess who you fall into? The prophets of Baal. Amen. The biggest sin in the old church today, one of them anyway, is idolatry. <laughs> I worship anything and everything, including the old time way. Anything oh. but Jesus. I worship my church. I worship my pastor. I worship my association. I worship my denomination. I worship the singers. I worship everything but God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Amen. Amen. There's only one God. Yes. And we worship Him through the Lord Jesus Christ. And Him only. Why? Because there's one mediator between God and men and that's the man Christ Jesus. Yes. One and only one. Elijah is the minority, but he has fully fixed his face like flint. He is sold out to God. He is not for sale. Uh, he is not a man uh, that you can set down and pull off track. Uh, he's not a man that's a politician uh, uh, to try and find a high seat in the church. Uh, he is sold out to God like oh, stock and barrel. He's not for sale. But he's the minority in this meeting. The second class of people in the time side of things is the prophets of Baal and those of the groves. A total of 850 men that are totally sold out to evil. Did you know that there's men here walking this earth that have sold their soul to Satan? Amen. They are committed to Him. And His will will they do. They've already settled it. It's not for dispute. They are sold out to the forces of evil and darkness. And their whole life is centered around that profession. And that was the majority as far as good and evil. But the third class was the whole house of Israel that had fallen into such a low estate did you know that we are in a great falling away? Did you know the old church, as it, it is at the lowest ebb that it has ever been in my lifetime? Yes. It is at the lowest point where even the people that profess to be Christians live worse than those that were the vilest of vile in the day when I was a child. Yes. What once was done in secrecy in the back alleys of the world is now paraded down Main Street as if it is right. And that if it be right, God would bless it, but God curses it. Tells me it's wrong. Third class of people Elijah, the minority, committed to God, won't budge. Won't budge. 850 committed to nothing but Satan, evil, and wickedness. Committed to the woman Jezebel and her husband, husband Ahab. Both parties sold out to who they serve. But in the midst of those two classes of people, the good and the righteous, the holy, and the evil and the wicked stands amidst the people that are uncommitted, that don't know who God is. 
And so God has commissioned Elijah go into their midst. He's come out of hiding. And now God has sent him to the very nation of Israel as a whole. And he stands in the midst. Elijah came in the 21st verse unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? How long will you sit on the fence? How long will you be in an uncommitted place in your life? If the Lord be God, follow Him. But if Baal, then follow Him. And the people answered Him not a word. They didn't know what to say. Why? Because evil was so prevalent in the culture at this time that the people didn't know who God was. Whether God was the God of Jehovah of Israel or whether Baal and the devil were leading the, the show. People today don't understand who's leading the world. Amen. Who's in control at this moment? Who's driving the bus? What's from God? What's from Satan? They don't even know that. And so God has commissioned his prophet. Go challenge this thing. You see, the church had gotten into such a place where it didn't even follow the, the laws and the commandment of God anymore. God. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. They weren't following God no more. They were in a place to where the Bible and the Word of God was not the final authority for them. Creeds. Canons. Minute books. Man-made places became of more authority than what the Word of God was to these people. When you get your heart in such a shape where you have to have a, a king to lead you instead of God and the Holy Ghost leading your life, you're in a bad place. Yes. You have left the foundations. And without a course correction, you are headed to the ditch. For if the blind lead the blind, they'll all fall in the ditch. Truth. Shipwreck. As for me and my house, yes. we will follow God and His Holy Bible. Yes. We are fixed and sold out to that principle. Yes. Then said Elijah in verse 22 the unto the people, I, even I, only remain a prophet of the Lord. Sometimes that's a lonely place to be. It's a place where people don't want to fellowship you because the house is full of compromise. They'll tell you you're way out there. You walk and you you march to a different beat. We can't, we can't walk with you. You can't graduate with our class. Why? Because you're way out there following God. We want compromise. We want leaders that will tell us what we want to hear rather than what God says. You're in a bad way. I only remain a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks 
and let them choose one bullet for themselves and cut it in pieces and lay it on the wood and put no fire under it. I will dress the other bullock and lay it on wood and put no fire under it. Praise God. Each one was going to offer a sacrifice. The one was offering their sacrifice to Satan. Elijah was going to offer his sacrifice to God. The one and only true God of heaven and earth. And call ye on the name of your gods and I will call on the name of the Lord and the God that answereth by fire. Let him be God. God always answers with fire. John said, I indeed baptize you with water under repentance, but there's one coming who's shoeless. I'm not worthy to unloose. He'll baptize you with fire and the Holy Ghost. The God that answers with fire, He is God. So they call on him, and they call on him, and they call on him. And the God of Balaam does not answer. They cut themselves with knives, beat themselves. Yet there's no, no fire falls. No answer from their God. Now it's Elijah's time. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. I want you to listen to this verse very, very carefully. Because this is where a good portion of the church is at. Right now as I speak to you. And Elijah said to unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired. Did you hear me? He had repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. They had left the altar of God. And tore it down to where it meant nothing anymore. And the troubler of Israel is about to put the stones back in the order to fix and repair the altar of God. Did you know Jesus Christ is our altar? Someone once asked me, in your church I don't see an altar. I said, he's at the right hand of the Father. His name's Jesus. He's the altar. Amen. He's also the Lamb of God that's laid on the altar. He's the high priest that does the job of sacrificing on the altar. Of Come on, Keith. He's also the mercy seat where the blood is applied, uh, where God can show mercy uh, and not judgment unto the sinner. Uh, Jesus Christ is the all in all in God's economy of plan uh, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So Elijah calls them all in order. And he begins to repair what they had let fallen down. If you plan on doing any good, old time church, you better repair the breaches you've made in the altar and get it set back up on the right foundation because you've let it shift. Yes. You've got kings ruling you rather than God. Verse 32. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench about the altar. I remind you it hasn't rained in three to three and a half years. There's a drought. 
Water's in short supply. Drinking water's in real short supply. And with the stones, he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed, and he put the wood in order. And he cut the bullock in pieces and laid him on the wood and said, Fill your barrels with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. Fill the trench with water. We don't want it to be dusty and dry so they may think that a spark somewhere started a fire. Drench it all real good with water and soak it. Because when the fire falls, I want you to understand that it came from heaven by the finger of God. That's what he's actually saying. And he said, do it the second time. And they did it the second time. Do it the third time. And they did it the third time. And the water ran round about the altar and he filled the trench also with water. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening, sacrifice. Elijah had everything in order. If your life and your ministry and your home's not in order, the fire won't fall. God is a God of order. God is a God of order. Yes. At the time of the evening sacrifice, Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel and that I am And that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O oh Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. Though Three classes of people. The minority sold out to God. One man called Elijah. 450 wicked men of Baal sold out to Satan. And all of Israel watching to see who was God. And God's fire fell. And they in unison cried out, The Lord God, He is God. Yes. Praise, Praise you, Jesus. That's where you're all at. Call on God. And instead of your numbers being decimated, your numbers will be increased. And the truth will be reestablished. Yes. And all of the house of Israel, spiritually speaking, will know that the Lord, He is still God. Yes. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Yes. What comes after you make that stand? Have you thought that through? No man begins to build unless he first sets down and counts up the cost. 
all those wicked men of Baal were put to the edge of the sword. Why? Because God is God. He hates evil. And the very next thing that you see is Jezebel threatening to kill the man of God. And he ran to the cave and hid. And the Lord, the good shepherd, sought him out. A great wind and God wasn't in it. A great earthquake and God wasn't in it. Fire everywhere and God wasn't in it. And then that lonely still voice that pierces a heart that's broken in the stillness of night with tears running on your pillow. made the old prophet bold. And God dealt with the other situation himself. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Know you that if you're lost and you're unsure of in, in this world where you're at and who you serve, Know ye by this book and the word of the living God that our Lord Jesus Christ is still God. Call on Him while He is nigh. In the days of thy youth seek Him. He is ever ready to hear. Knock, it shall be opened. Seek, and ye shall find. Will you seek Him? Will you call upon Him? Give Him your whole heart. Because the day is coming when this world will be on fire. From the heavens to the earth itself will be on fire unquenchable fire and heat. And the Lord Himself will send His angels from the four winds of the earth, the north, the south, the east, and the west, and will gather the bundles of tares and burn them with unquenchable fire. But He will gather His wheat into the garner. yourself to him. Call on him while he is nigh, I beg you, in Jesus' name.